Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cannabis Tech Talks, your weekly source for news and insights at the intersection of cannabis and technology. Shout out to our title sponsor, PolyScience, for supporting this podcast and helping us bring you the latest developments in what is a pretty exciting field. Uh, So I'm Patricia Miller, executive editor, and today we're going to talk about vaporizers. Um, So the general trend with vaporizers, I'm sure most of our audience is familiar with, uh, with these devices. The, the idea is to heat cannabis to a temperature that releases the active compounds, ideally without burning the plant material. Um, it's easier on the lungs. It enhances the flavor profile. And while many are likely familiar with the electronic vapes that are now more abundant, especially um, disposable vapes, uh, we're going to be talking with someone today who's taken a different approach to this uh, sector. We're with George Brewa, founder of Dynavap. He's going to talk about how his company is sort of um, looking at this tech a little bit differently. So let's dive in. Thanks for joining us, George. Thank you so much, Patricia. I really appreciate the opportunity to join you today. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Um, So I'm always kind of interested before we start talking about the technology to hear about how, how innovators kind of go from an established field to something sort of unusual like cannabis. So what were you doing before you got into the cannabis space? Uh, really fun question. Believe it or not, uh, I was uh, spraying foam insulation. All right. <laughs> so so what inspired the, the switch for you? Uh, the biggest thing that inspired it for me was coming from a bit of a background of a person that found that uh, a little bit of cannabis made for a better overall life experience for me, uh, especially, you know, the, the right amount under the right circumstances. Uh, but there was always this, uh, what I would refer to as a bit of a negative trade-off. And that really kind of occurred at the ingestion point when uh, I would do like so many people, whether they're uh, in the industry or just uh, consumers of uh, the plant, the flower, cannabis, however you want to describe it, when we would go through that process of lighting it on fire uh, and then inhaling the uh, combustion byproducts. It just didn't sit well with me uh, on a, a number of levels, including the way that it tasted, as well as the way that it made me feel in terms of uh, you know the flavor in my mouth and the burning in my throat and my lungs. Now, the effects is what I was looking for, but not the uh, the side effects. So I began looking into some alternatives, and it, it really started to move quickly for me when my neighbor purchased this interesting little vaporizer uh, made by a company called Iolite out of Ireland. This little butane-powered thing that looked like a walkie-talkie. Uh, and I can remember the first time I tried it, I was like, okay. This is quite a shift. This uh, The flower now tastes like it smells. It doesn't burn my throat. All right. Where do I get one of these things? And I started looking into it, thinking, okay, he bought one. I'm going to do my research to see if I can find a better one. And so I looked into this for weeks. Uh, figuring I could find an electronic device, something a little bit better, temperature control, heat up a little faster, be smaller, more compact. And... After uh, spending a fair amount of my time searching, I came to the conclusion that there wasn't anything better on the market at that point in time. This was 2012, by the way. Okay. So I bought the same model and it became something that I would use uh, regularly when that that time would arise that, you know what, I think I might benefit from a, a small dose. And what I found is that it was a bit more laborious. It wasn't terribly efficient. And doggone it, these things are really expensive. And I I think that's really important from the perspective that I was beginning to form at that time that, okay, so many people around the world refer to cannabis as medicine, yet show me another medicine that uh, is consumed by lighting it on fire. And it it just, it wasn't lining up for me uh, that this is medicine, but we light it on fire. Oh, okay. But we've got these options for vaporizers, 
but very few people use them because they either don't know they exist or they're just so darn big and expensive that they just don't fit into most people's lifestyle. Hence, the question was fully formed at that point. How big and how expensive does a vaporizer need to be in order to function well and to fit into people's lifestyle? And it was the pursuit of the answer of this question that was the impetus for the creation of Dynavap. I love that. I think um, it's interesting that, as you said, a lot of uh, people refer to it as medicine and many doctors will uh, prescribe cannabis, but not uh, inhalation of combusted cannabis. Um, and some states have even gone so far as to legalize the consumption of cannabis in all forms except uh, combusted inhalation. So yeah. I think that speaks to your point that it it's not necessarily the most health friendly approach to what is um could, can be a a, a health in, an invigorating experience a, a medical experience for people. So I appreciate that you considered that. Well, it's it, it really resonated with me because I have personally seen the the positive impact that cannabis can have on many people. Yet. I struggle with this disconnect that, well, it's not like tobacco. Well, no, it's not. However, it doesn't matter what it is that you're burning. You're creating a whole slew of rather nasty toxic compounds that although burning cannabis may not be nearly as carcinogenic as tobacco smoke, smoke in general is just generally not good for any living organism. I think that's fair. <laughs> and you know, which, which th there's one other point that just really resonated with me. So, okay. You know, back in 2012 and even more so today, 10 years later, here we are, 2022, we have in our civilization, some of the most mind blowing phenomenal technology that is beyond even the capacity for most of us to even grasp or understand because it's just so ridiculously uh, evolved complex and just overall incredible yet we don't have the technology to make consuming our medicine more appropriate for being medicine well i i struggle with that one because i believe we do have the technology and we do have the technology to make it accessible to nearly anyone on this planet that is looking to utilize cannabis as a medicine to do it in a more responsible, not only to themselves, but to the environment and to the people around them manner. I appreciate that. And I think a lot of the dry herb vaporizers that you see on the market now, um, especially the the higher end, you know, precision engineered um, products that, that you see talked about, they're often hundreds of dollars. So yes. that can create a real barrier for access. Well, and, and it, and it goes further than that. Uh, the vast majority of the options on the market are mass produced in offshore factories, contain large amounts of plastic, batteries, heavy metals, and electronics. I'm not saying that they're not good quality products, but they, they have the downsides in terms of, in exchange for the convenience of all of these things when you combine the electronics, the batteries, the controls, the plastic, et cetera, you can make a device that actually works really well for a time. And that means, okay, so when it no longer works, then where does it go? And then what does that person do when they have, they have to buy another one? And so this was another uh, principle that when, when we got our company off the ground and running, uh, the, the, the secondary question that happened after we had kind of got onto the path of how big and how expensive does a vaporizer need to be in order to accomplish the task is, can we make these things so durable that even if they aren't a disposable price, you know, 10, 15, $20, they can still be so durable that even a slightly higher price, it becomes easy for a consumer to justify purchasing it because this device may last as long as the silverware in their kitchen. 
That's cool. Well, so let's um, let's talk about Dynavap then. Tell us uh, about the tech and how your yours kind of stands out. Okay, so uh, our devices are actually very small. Uh, so I can kind of hold it up here just for comparison. Uh, you know, just just even compared to a finger, you can see it's small. Uh, it's roughly the same length as an XL cigarette and just slightly larger in diameter. Okay, uh, 10 millimeters in diameter, and this one is 92 millimeters long or around three inches. Okay, so very small. Uh, if I put it next to a, a pen, for example, you know, it's, it's smaller than most pens. Okay, contains no batteries, no electronics. Uh, this model is, is what we call our M+. It's completely manufactured from stainless steel and a couple of high temperature O-rings. That's it. And it functions by utilizing any available external heat source. Okay. And this is particularly nice because if you're someplace where you don't have access to electricity, a charger, or something else along those lines, you can literally utilize almost anything that's hot uh, from a Bic lighter to a candle or a stick out of the campfire. And all we need to do is this little cap right here that covers the chamber where your flower goes. Okay, we load this with flour. We put our cap back on. This cap has a built-in thermostat, which is what allows it to function with any available heat source. And I can just take a lighter like this, and I can just carefully heat this up. It generally takes about 10 seconds to warm up the temperature. And we know we're there. And we are able to use all these different heat sources because this cap clicks when we're at temperature. That was cool. For for those uh, listening, I was able to see it, but you could kind of see the, the cap click. It'll, it'll move or jump generally pretty reliably, but it also makes a very audible click that tends to do a really good job once you've trained your ears to hear it. Kind of like you know your child's voice in a crowd. You can hear your cap click in a loud environment. Uh, you, you know, I've even at uh, large music festivals, concerts, etc. I can still hear it click, and you can train your fingers to even feel it click because there's a mechanical thermostat in here that's actuating. So it creates that tactile feedback. It gives you something visual. We just heard the reset click. It cuts through the noise, and because of that thermostat, it allows us to have that freedom of using any available heat source that we have at that moment in time. So you don't have to ever worry about your batteries going and not having a charger. And then, oh, well, my, my vaporizer is dead. Uh, here, can I have a lighter? Uh, I, I guess I'll just smoke. Yeah. You don't have to go back to smoking. And then uh, for those of you that are familiar with vaporizers, you get this ancillary benefit of your medicine goes generally twice as far mm. because when you're burning your cannabis the the process of combustion actually destroys somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 60 percent of all of the active compounds wow that's a lot it, it, it's a huge amount so it's very very wasteful and you know when i say these things this is based on uh, evidence and commentary from thousands of people uh, that have purchased our devices. And the narrative is, is, is so similar from one person to the next that I cannot believe how much material this device is saving me. Yeah, I think that's something that um, is often overlooked in the discussion about uh, combustion versus vaporization you're you're saving a lot of material and um and i think another interesting part is you're not going to be inhaling any of the the combusted material so you know i think people who are used to using the flame to smoke um are familiar with sometimes getting it in your mouth or you know coughing especially as you get down to the end of the bowl um right and that's an experience you can really avoid with vaporization you sure can so you know, the, the key things that I think really stand out is if you're a person that's consuming any amount of cannabis or even other herbs, because the, the reality is this is nothing more than a an oven with a thermostat. Okay. So lavender actually works really nice in here as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
when you only heat it hot enough to release the active compounds, we can siphon those off almost like it's a magic wand or a magic straw that allows us to extract what we want and leave everything else behind. When this happens, we get a very effective extraction of those active compounds. We don't create the combustion byproducts. And because uh, we're able to so much more effectively separate these compounds from the, the biomass, the amount of material that you actually consume for the same desired effect is usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 50%, sometimes even less. And what that means is if you're talking about a device like this that retails for $89 in the US, a person that's consuming a few grams a week, this device will pay for itself in one month. Wow. Okay. And it will likely last, whoever uses it, if you take care of it, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 years. So it's capable of paying for itself, in my opinion, more so than almost any other device you can buy. I love that. And I think something we talk about a lot at Cannabis and Tech today is um, sustainability. And that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But when you're considering um, the resource intensity of a lot of electronic components, um, it's valuable to think of things in terms of their longevity. So I appreciate that you brought that up. Well, I think it's a really important point. And it, it's made for a bit of a challenging business model. Because if we think about the vast majority of businesses that are situated around products, okay, uh, one of the hardest things for a business to do is to acquire a customer. It's much, much easier to retain a customer once you have that customer. So some of the most profitable businesses in the world produce consumable products. So you get the customer on board, you get them familiar with the brand, and you continue to sell them replacement and replenishment supplies for whatever it is that you're producing. When we took the, what I would like to say is the very consumer-centric approach to, okay, we have access to some incredible technology. What if we make the most durable device we possibly can with no reservations, no holdbacks? Let's make the device that if we were the consumer, we would want to buy something that is engineered to last us potentially our entire lifetime with potentially... No need to replace anything other than a few O-rings that cost a few dollars total. Uh, maybe, occasionally, this little cap will wear out because you're repeatedly heating it up to a high temperature. And it's rather thin metal, but even that doesn't cost very much. The rest of the machine components, there's almost nothing to fail. I mean, even if you back over with your car, it's still likely going to function. Uh, so, okay, we remove the durability factor. We have upwards of double the efficiency of combustion extraction. So the device can pay for itself time and time again. Well, what's to bring the customer back? Mm -hmm. And so that becomes one of our bigger challenges. And uh, we've been able to address it to a degree by continuing to update and take the things that we've learned about our devices and how our customers are utilizing them and try and incorporate that into our next generation the products that come from the subsequent years. Uh, how can we continue to improve and give our customers a reason to want to come back and maybe buy another part, another accessory, or another device? I think that's um, a challenge for, for business owners and especially, but I think it's more so for consumers. Something that my brother and I like to talk about, he's um, a bit of an engineer and he's he's often taking products that he purchases and improving them and making changes to them. And we've talked about what a cool uh, company idea it would be to make, um, to just make one product really well uh, and in, in all these different categories, because the goal would be that nobody ever has to buy it again if you get it really well made one time. But then, as you said, that does become a challenging business model because how do you, you know, you'd have to sell one to everybody on earth in order to make continual profit. Well, it's, yeah, it's a real challenge. And I think it's one that tends to be overlooked by many consumers is that if your product is so good and so durable that there's no need to buy another one, okay, you have one of the most difficult business models that there is that literally every time you sell a product to a customer, you're taking them out 
potentially of the purchasing pool. So you got to go and find that customer. You got to educate that customer. You got to get them to be willing to take the risk to try your product. And once they do, if they like it, great. You've now satisfied their need. Yeah, exactly. Will they buy another one? Maybe. But if you've done a good job designing the product, you know, according to the, the whole principle that we're talking about here, Patricia, to make it as good as you possibly can, well, there is no need to buy another product from your company for that person. So how, how are you addressing that? So we, we've tried two different approaches uh, somewhat simultaneously. Number one is as a company that manufactures our product, and I think it's probably important for me to take just a, a little bit of a digression here and talk a little bit about what our company really is. We're not just a company designing products and having them manufactured overseas. Okay. So we design the products here in our shop in DeForest, Wisconsin. We also manufacture our products here in our shop in DeForest, Wisconsin. Okay. So we bring in the raw materials, we machine all the parts, and we go through every step of the process of manufacturing, uh, finishing, cleaning, QC, assembly, packaging, as well as order fulfillment and customer service, all right here at our, at our location in Wisconsin. And although that's a much more difficult approach to take, it's empowered us with the ability to do some rather uh, useful things from a business perspective. And that is, most importantly, it's allowed us to iterate our products at a much, much faster pace than when you need to buy a large quantity from an overseas uh, manufacturer to get your price point low and then going through the traditional lines of distribution. And then you got to sell through that product and so you can take a small profit. And then maybe if you're lucky, you can revise a few small things that aren't going to dramatically change your manufacturing costs and you make another batch. Mm. Uh, but having our own manufacturing, especially in the earlier years of our company, we were able to implement improvements and iterations sometimes on a daily basis as we were gathering feedback from our staff our beta testers and our our customers, which allowed our product to evolve, I think, at a bit more of a fast pace compared to other small startup companies. So it's our ability to refine our product at a faster pace. And as we're doing that, we're not just trying to innovate our product. Uh, we found that we've got some amazing people in this company that have a huge passion for not only what we're doing, but what we can do for the people, what we can do for the industry. And we've taken it so far as to begin building our own machines and modifying them to better suit our needs. And it's allowed us to really step up our ability to produce really interesting and engaging products. And, you know, this, this version here, and I'll try and hold a little bit closer to the camera so you can see a bit more of the texture and the machining of, uh, there's a lot going on in these devices. And one of the key aspects that now that we've got the functionality pretty much dialed in, we've shifted our focus to what I'm going to refer to is the tactile user interface, right? On a computer, you've got a graphical user interface, right? So it's all through the eyes. With a device like this, the eyes are far less important than the fingers. And what we've been able to do with the device and the various features on it, uh, for example, the little airport here, and on just opposite the airport, there's a little pivot point that's been machined in there. So it's very tactile, very easy to feel. You don't even have to look for it. So I can grab this device in the dark without even looking at it, and my fingers can completely navigate and I can orient it exactly the way I want it to be so I can utilize it almost without looking at it. I love that. I think those little changes uh, are always something that stand out to to customers. Um, George, let's take a, a quick sponsor break to pay the bills, and we'll be right back with more. Every cultivator knows that facility design can make or break your grow. So why not choose the team with over 16 years of experience in the industry? Cerna Cultivation Technologies provides floor plan and architectural services, comprehensive HVACD equipment, lighting, and benching and so much more, all within your budget. It's time to grow your way. Go to Cerna.com, that's S-U-R-N-A.com, to learn more. 
right. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're here with George and we're talking about uh, vaporizers. So, yeah, I appreciate you sharing with me some of the innovations that you've been working on currently with uh, Dynavap. Have you got anything that you're excited about sort of on the horizon for the company or the design? We actually have a couple interesting things that we're working on. Uh, one of them is we are nearly complete with uh, having our facility uh, registered as being uh, ISO 9001 compliant, which is a really important thing for a manufacturer, especially when it comes to making devices that might be considered to be medical grade. Uh, so hopefully we'll have that taken care of here in the near future. We really do believe that our devices are one of the best options for people that are consuming cannabis specifically for medicinal purposes, because not having plastic or uh, any of the electronics means you've got a device that's extremely small, compact, easy to use, and also extremely easy to clean because literally every single component of this device is dishwasher safe, oh, which wow. gets us to what I think is another really interesting thing that we're starting to see happen now as a uh, normalization is progressing. And that is we're finally starting to see some cannabis consumption options. So just like bars have been around for generations where you can go and have a few drinks with some friends, that's becoming possible to go someplace and maybe even skip the alcohol and consume a little bit of cannabis with some friends. The problem is, as smoking has been kind of downplayed as not being good or appropriate, uh, well, smoking cannabis is not necessarily better. And there's a lot of laws here in the U.S. against smoking indoors. Mm -hmm. So an option like this is nice, and it's particularly nice because I like to think about these devices as being kind of like the pint glass at the bar. Very few people go to a bar and expect to take their own cup to get a pint of beer. Whereas a product like this, whether it's a cannabis consumption cafe or it's a high-end restaurant that's pairing cannabis with food, these devices, all stainless steel, we also have titanium models, can be pre-filled and provided to the customer ready for use. And we've got options that uh, make them very easy to use in a setting like this. Uh, I've got one example here. This is actually a little portable induction heater. Mm. Okay, So we can make heating these devices extremely easy by just simply pushing the button and can be centered in the table, just like a fondue pot. And <laughs> the customer can grab their starting strain, they can heat it up, they can take a puff or two, they can set it down, they can finish it later or complete it all at once. And the next person can then stick their device right in this simple little heater uh, centered on the table. And since we're not burning anything, can consume this cannabis without offending or creating any indoor problems, if that makes sense. Yeah, a cleaner indoor alternative. And I like the concept of using it and reusing it in a consumption lounge setting. Something I've talked with uh, consumption lounge owners about is having an array of devices available that help educate the consumer on different ways to consume. And sure. something I talked about was you know, how do you accurate, how do you clean these effectively and efficiently and keep your product working well while you're doing that on such a regular basis? So I think a lot of people could appreciate that functionality. And that's a, that's a real important thing, especially when it comes to electronic devices. How do you clean them? I can tell you with this device, cleaning is super easy. We literally pull it apart. No tools necessary. Okay. So I can completely disassemble this into the constituent parts in just a matter of seconds. And although you can wash this, in general, the cap doesn't get dirty. Okay. The other three parts can be dropped in a cleaning solution, isopropyl alcohol, for example, or can be run through a dishwasher, uh, an autoclave, any of these sorts of things to get them very, very clean and sterile, if that's what you need, and can be put right back into circulation minutes later because it's stainless steel. It's, it's happy to be cleaned and sterilized. That's cool. Where can our listeners go to to keep up with what you're doing, George, and learn more about Dynavap? So our website is dynavap.com. That's D-Y-N-A-V-A-P.com. Uh, you can see all of the products that we have available for sale. 
You can also find our YouTube channel with a whole lot of videos and other content that helps to illustrate uh, how our product functions, how to use it, tips and tricks, et cetera. I love it. Well, I'm so glad you took the time to chat with us, George. I learned a lot and um, I may have to try one of those Dynavaps myself. <laughs> so I appreciate you uh, sitting down with us. Well, I'd be happy to share, Patricia. Uh, so just uh, make sure you get me your contact information and we'll uh, give you a, a free pass to the club. Woohoo! <laughs> well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's episode of Cannabis Tech Talks. Uh, this podcast is produced by Pretty Easy Podcasts. So if you're looking for professional production quality at an affordable rate, check out prettyeasypodcasts.com. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to Cannabis Tech Talks, leave us a rating and review, and follow us on social so you can stay up to date on all the latest news and insights. Uh, until next time, this has been Patricia Miller and uh, George, and we're thrilled that we could chat with you today. Stay elevated. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thanks, George. Hey, hello, I'm Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. Wait, you didn't think people would know who I am? Durachill. Uh, this is Durachill. This is Durachill. This is Durachill. No. Hey, I don't talk like that. You want me to sell this? Buy it. Try Durachill or else. If you want something really nice in your laboratory, buy Durachill. You can't go wrong.